Uh, hi, my name is Rick Olderman. I'm a physical therapist here at Body and Balance Physical Therapy, and we've been seeing quite a few uh, injuries in our clinic, climbing, climbing injuries. So I thought, uh, let's go out in the community and uh, talk to an expert about this. So we're here at Movement Climbing and Fitness here in Denver, Colorado, talking to climbing instructor extraordinaire David Wall, and uh, he has a few things to share with us. So David, uh, I'm, I know that you see a lot of injuries here at, at your facility. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're doing about injuries or what you think is the problem for right. a lot of So issues? one of the most common things that we see here at uh, most of the climbing gyms is uh, movement patterns that are wrong. So one example of this is climbing with what we call chicken winging, where you get your elbows extended backward instead of pulling down straight. So typically what this does is put a lot of pressure on the front side of the shoulder, sometimes on the inside of your elbow. Those are the most common uh, injuries that, that people talk about besides finger injuries. And, and why do you think people are doing that? I think that people get uh, fatigued. So sometimes when you're fatigued, your forearm flexors need a little bit of help. So your extensors can help you out by getting into this position, but you're risking an injury when you do that. Plus, I think it's also awareness. I think people just don't know that, that this is not the optimal position. So if they knew that, then they can optimize their position. So maybe a little private instruction would be a helpful in some cases. Yeah, sometimes uh, just hiring a coach, just like any other sport, uh, you know, you can save yourself a lot of headaches with injury and technique if you just get a little bit of instruction early on. Okay, and then, uh, you know, before we were doing this uh, filming, I just noticed that you were doing a warm-up even preparing, you know, to, to do this filming. And I looked around the gym and I didn't really see anyone else doing a warm up. Right. And, uh, and I thought it was a, a, an interesting warm up that you do. And I thought you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. So, uh, one of the things that I'm trying to do in my warm up is not just warm up tissue, but also warm up my brain. So, when I say warm up my brain, what I really mean is that I'm trying to get in really good uh, movement patterns, but I'm trying to get some range of motion at what I call the four corners, my shoulders and my hips. And I'm trying to loosen up my scapula on my shoulders by doing some of those extended positions that I was uh, doing earlier. And then I'm trying to do some lunging, side lunging and forward lunging or backward lunging to get some range of motion at my hips and be strong in extended positions. Okay, and then I also saw you doing some strap work too. Right, I used some rubber bands to, to help me uh, get my rotator cuff uh, a little bit warmed up and then do some scapular retraction with the, with the longer rubber band so that I can get uh, my middle trapezius to work a little bit more than my rhomboids because I think my, when my rhomboids get tight then I tend to climb like this and this is not a good position for us to be in. Mm -hmm. So if you can keep your shoulders away from your ears, then you'll be stronger. Mm -hmm. So you get to uh, use your lat a little bit more. When you're up here like this, you tend to be uh, really focused on arm strength. And when you can pull your shoulder down, then you're activating your uh, lat muscle in your back a little bit more. Okay, great. And so uh, one of the things that you were telling me about earlier was this idea of hooking your heel when you're climbing, right. you see some injuries around that. Can you explain a little bit about what that's about? Sure, a lot of times when we're climbing, uh, what we're trying to do is use our feet 
to, to help us ascend or uh, make upward motion. And sometimes you need uh, a foot to pull yourself in toward the wall. So sometimes people aren't very strong in the back of their thigh or, or they, they try using their, their heel and they pull too hard for how strong they are. So I do some exercises to, to warm up and strengthen my hamstrings and what we call the posterior chain. Got it. Uh, speaking of the posterior chain, the posterior chain is basically the musculature in the back of the, of the leg and the rear end. So uh, you had a couple exercises that you yeah. uh, recommend people work on for this reason. Yeah, so I can demonstrate that now if yeah, you'd like. Yeah, sure. Okay. All set. Okay, so your hamstring group is uh, bi-articular, so that means it's passing two joints. So not only do I want to do knee dominant exercises like the hamstring curl, but I also want to do a hip dominant exercise like a Romanian deadlift. So when I do this, I have slightly bent knees and then I'm pivoting only at my hip so I'm not rounding my back when I do this. <clears throat> and then I'll have some weight that I pull and I'm focused on not keeping my legs perfectly straight but mostly stiff. And then I'm gonna stand straight up and not arch my back at the top. How many reps would you do with that? Sorry, I would do maybe five repetitions. It depends on uh, how heavy it is, but uh, you could do single leg or you could do a barbell. In this case, I'm using a, a kettlebell for instructional purposes, but sometimes I do kettlebell swings, which I do uh, Russian style instead of the American style. The American style is very knee dominant and the Russian style is very hip dominant. So uh, it adds a little bit more power to your posterior chain. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do is to keep my feet straight. So the uh, outside of your hamstring, your biceps femoris is a little stronger than the inside uh, two hamstrings, so your feet want to pull in an external fashion. So I try to do my best to keep my feet nice and straight, and lift my hips up, and then initiate with my hips coming up instead of pulling with my hips low. When I pull with my hips low, then uh, that's sort of a, a faulty movement pattern, so I'm trying to stay in a straight line from my knees to my shoulders and move straight up. So I'll do this with two feet for 10 repetitions, and then I'll do five repetitions with one foot. And you can also uh, go from what we call dorsiflexion position to a plantar flexion position. So when we heel hook, we tend to be in a dorsiflex position, but we're, when we're on overhanging climbs, we tend to be toed down. So if you keep your toe down, it's quite a bit more difficult and activates your hamstring a little bit more. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Dave, for your help. And yeah, hopefully that, that helps you all out out there. And, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully everyone gets stronger and stays injury free. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Uh, we always appreciate more help from clinicians. Right. Definitely. Great. Well, it's a great facility and I'm, I'm really happy to, to yeah. speak with you about this. Thank you. All right. My pleasure. All right.